I'm telling 
Life can be a confusing journey, and it doesn't always make sense. Family issues, substance abuse, fading health, and financial problems are just a few of the roadblocks you may encounter. Need answers? At Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, we want you to know that God loves you and has the answers you seek. No one here expects you or your life to be perfect. At Woodlawn Park, we're just like you. Real people with real problems who are seeking real solutions in Christ. We've been through some of the same struggles and understand that the pathway to your full potential is paved with love, support, and the encouragement of a dynamic community of believers. We know that within Challenges Lab, the opportunity to move mountains in our lives and in our community. We believe that God has a purpose for you, and our goal is to help you achieve it. At Woodlawn Park, we're creating a new brand of believers, one that beats the odds when there isn't a chance, one that succeeds when the world says we can't, one that truly cares about the abandoned and lost. One that has faith in God's power, no matter the cost. If you're wondering what your purpose is in life, if you're looking for the next step, join us. Let us meet you where you are, teach, encourage, and motivate you to allow God to enhance your life so that you can transform the world. Good morning to the members of the body of Christ and all those who are searching for God in their lives. My name is Elmer Assembly III, the minister here with the Whitlam Park Church of Christ. We are ready for another excellent worship service to our Lord and Savior. Father, uh, we are going to start our um, we're going to start our worship service this morning with our illustrious uh, song leader. Uh, Brother uh, Brother Robinson Jr., and uh, we are going to have a wonderful time today. Hopefully, you have your Bibles, your pens, everything ready to take notes. I'm happy to be back here, as you can tell, uh, with you this morning. Let's go to God and worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's have an opening song right now. Brother Robinson, thank you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us all stand at this time. Let us all stand at this time. Good morning to each and every one of you who are tuning in and those that are present with us uh, at this time in spirit and truth. I know some of the world is celebrating a victory, amen. Amen. Uh, but we are celebrating a victory in Jesus. Is that all right? Yes, right. yeah, so we want to celebrate a victory in Jesus. Hymn number 229. I will sing all three stanzas of the song at this time. Let us sing. I heard it all, oh, story. I have saved the king. Oh, oh, oh. 
such a wonderful opportunity and God's grace for us to be able to come together wherever we are and worship him in spirit and in truth. We're just so thankful for all the things that God has and will continue to do in our lives. Psalms 84 says, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will still praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee and whose heart are the ways of them. Let us go to God in an opening word of prayer. Most righteous God, we are just grateful. We are just blessed that you have allowed us to understand the mystery of your word, that you have given us a spirit to seek you and to find out what thus say the Lord. We are just mindful of the many things that are occurring in, in our lives, the things that are occurring in this world. We understand, though, Heavenly Father, that you remain in control and that your mercy shines through this whole world, particularly those who put you on in faith, in love, and baptism. Continue to be with us this morning. Help us to be able to put aside those things that perplex us and give us space now, dear Lord, to receive your engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. We thank you so much for those who are here in our sanctuary, for those who are looking at us from online. We just pray that we will continue to provide what you need in order to build your faith and build your love in Jesus Christ. Guide and direct us always to Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated at this time. Let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Oldham. What an encouraging prayer. God bless you on this morning. Glory to his name. We're going to sing the first uh, and second stanza of the song as we prepare our hearts now for the Lord's Supper, uh, which will eventually transition into the offering uh, of the morning. Hymn number 196. Let us sing. Down at the cross where my Savior heard down.
to you out there that are tuning in. Right. We are at the time that we're going to uh, do what the Lord tells us to do. He says to remember him. Amen. I'm going to be uh, reading from Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 on down, as we prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits for the communion portion of our service. The Bible says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us go to our God in prayer. Most righteous Father, we thank you for allowing your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And we pray that not only that we can give you a return on your investment, but that we live lives that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight, and that we are redeemed and one day will meet you uh, in heaven and dwell there forever. These things and all things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, you may partake of the cup. transition to the offering portion of our service. I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and the verse is 6. The Bible says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful, giver, a cheerful giver. At this point, we're going to give an offering to our Lord. And if you are here today and you'd like to uh, make a deposit in the box towards my right and your left in the back of the room, the receptacle. If you're at home, we have several opportunities to give. You can text Woodlawn Give to 77977. You can log on to woodlawnpark.org, give. You can be old school and send uh, your offering to P.O. Box 47248, Windsor Mill, Maryland, 21244. At this time, please give as the Lord has prospered you. And let us add a blessing to that offering. Let us go to our God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for, uh, for, for purpose, for prospering, for uh, your ability to provide for your children. And we just thank you for the wisdom to use these funds that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray that these funds expand the borders of your kingdom, bring more people to Christ, and change this world from darkness to light. These things and all things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God 
bless you, sir. Uh, despite the uh, outcome throughout this uh, entire week, it's been tough on some of us. Amen. Um, but we know that God is love, and we know that the church presents a common love. And so we're going to sing um, a song this morning. We'll sing it uh, four times. Uh, it's the same chorus. It's entitled A Common Love. Let's say a common love together, church. A what? A common love. love. And that's what we should have in the truth of God's word. Amen. Um, so we're going to sing this song. And then you get in where you fit in, if that's all right. It goes like this. A common love for each other. Come and give to the Savior. A common bond are holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary. A common hope for tomorrow. A common joy. In the truth of God's word. Help me out. A common love for each other, a common give to the Savior, a common bond a holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope. For tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's word. Two more times, saying a common love for each other, a common give to the Savior, a common by holding us to the Lord. truth of God's word will say we'll sing a common love for each other a common give to the Savior a common bond a holding us to the Lord or a common strength when we're weary a common for tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right. Thank God for another day is rising us up to see. All praise be and honor to our Lord and our God. Amen. I come to you this morning with the scripture to read boldly in your hearing what God has given us. May these words bless and keep you during your week and during the time that we have here this morning. I'll be reading to you from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And it reads, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer therein? Let us go to the throne of grace. Mighty everlasting God of heaven, our eternal Father, in you we live, move, and have our existence. We thank you, dear God. We look towards the hill which cometh our help this morning. We know that our help cometh from the Lord Almighty, who made the heavens and the earth. As we come before you this morning, Father, we come with prayer and supplication and intercession that it be made to all men, especially those in the household of faith. Father, we know that we are going through some trying times, Father, but we see each step of the way that you are able to make a smooth path for your people and for 
the country, and for the nation. Amen. Father, as we go into an epidemic time, Father, we, we pray and um, let lay aside all the weight of sin that so easily befall us and let us run this race with patience yes. and help us to, see, to receive the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. Amen. We come, Father, just praying for all those that going through some trying times, Father, in the church. Mm. We, Father, we understand that prayer, although prayer seems like it's just word, Father, but because of your will, those words mean a lot. Right. And that though you are able to deliver us, Father, from every, any pestilence, Father, any sword or any oh. danger. We just thank you, Father, for prayer. For prayer means so much, Father. We see, O oh, Father, that you have used prayer, Father, just to save the world. And help us to be a nation that pray. The people that pray together stay together and get saved together. We just thank you, Father, for all things this morning. Father, just, just, we just come just to glorify your name. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the God who alone is wise, all honor and glory be to thy name. It's in your mighty name we pray this prayer and all prayer. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you, Brother Taylor. Amen. Let us all stand at this time. Brother got me fired up with the prayer. Looking forward to uh, hearing our man servant, Brother Simley, this morning. Let's give him a love deposit. Let's clap it out for we haven't seen him in a few weeks. Amen. I told him it's like it's like not having MJ in 95. Y'all don't know anything about that. Yeah, MJ in 95. The Bulls, no MJ. No, no championship. This is all right. No championship. We're going to say just a little talk with Jesus. We'll start off with the chorus if we can, and we'll transition um, into the first, second, and third verse. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell them all about our trouble. He will hear our faith. Tis a cry. And he will answer by and by. Now will you feel a little prayer or yearning? Has your heart to heaven in hurting? You will find a little talk with Jesus. Thanks here I are. I want to say I once was a lot. Sin, oh Lord, but Jesus put me in oh, and then a little light from heaven filled my heart. Oh, it filled my soul, oh Lord, it made my heart in love and wrote my name on the ball. Oh, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Jesus makes it right. Oh, right. oh Lord, it's all right. 
up with G the chorus, y'all. Help me out, y'all. Oh, Let the church say amen this morning. We are definitely privileged to be able to come together at this place, at this time, and to, for the express purpose of worshiping our great God in heaven. We are definitely uh, experiencing uh, some uh, unique and some uh, very, uh, for the last week, some celebratory uh, times. I, I just... I uh, am just at uh, awe at what can be done when people come together and when people join together with the same mind and same purpose uh, in almost any endeavor, uh, they can be successful. But particularly uh, when you're talking about spiritual matters, when we come together and when we worship together, and when we build together, and when we trust God together, we are definitely in uh, some great times, uh, or well, at least challenging times, which can be great. I was, I've been away uh, for the last couple of weeks, so I have not uh, been able to see you uh, and uh, be able to experience uh, the worship at Woodlawn Park because I believe uh, we are, uh, we make a difference. I think that, and we are making a difference, not only here in our community with some of the things that we are, are doing with the uh, community, but also with our brothers and sisters and would-be brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I was in New Orleans, uh, the first trip was in New Orleans, where they're doing a weekend uh, a seminar, a weekend gospel uh, kind of like a meeting, but really what we were doing other uh, aspects of our congregation, members of our congregation, were installing uh, a new media center for a, another Church of Christ. Uh, and that is a real need for our brotherhood now. There are many congregations who are still not up uh, in the media uh, range as far as being able to um, communicate and connect with people on Facebook and other areas. And so we were down there and we were sharing our knowledge and sharing our experience and uh, installing equipment. And uh, so they are up and running now. And this is the second uh, Church of Christ in which we were able to help in this manner. And there are, there are others which are in line for that. So God is using us in a mighty way in that way. And then the second trip was to uh, Kentucky Christian University where I was doing a lecture and uh, because of this day and times, the, the, what's happening in our environment, um, they had an interest of, of how uh, can we be uh, closer related? How can uh, they be uh, more diverse? Uh, how can they uh, have a, a greater understanding of other people and other cultures? Because we know that uh, when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, there is not going to be a segregated uh, banquet table. There's not going to be a table for this group and a table for that group. Uh, the Bible f tells us clearly in Revelation, the seventh chapter, in verse number nine, that there will be many tongues. There will be all nations gathered together at the Lord's table. So we're going to have to learn how to uh, gather ourselves together, how to be, uh, work together, how to live together, how to uh, hopefully go to heaven together. Now, saying that, we know that we've just experienced uh, a real, um, I, I would say, a, 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 we, a turning point that this country needed. And I, I'm just uh, excited about that. I had a couple of videos that I wanted to show. Uh, I'll show them next week uh, to you as far as uh, the one of how um, what's happening around my neighborhood. Now, I, I live in a neighborhood where I had to for the last four years, experienced uh, Trump flags and, and Confederate flags in the back of trucks. But, you know, you got to do what you have to do. And, you know, I used to, you know, they, they would speak. I have, a, I have very good neighbors, though. 
uh, they would speak and, and everything. I, I wanted to tell them to take the Trump flag uh, down, but um, I, you don't do that. You just, you just, you just withstand it. And you know, for the last about eight months, I come outside, they'll speak, and I'll just say, hey. But this week, wow. yesterday, <laughs> he said, hi. I said, hey. <laughs> We're happy because it's a wonderful day. November the 7th was a wonderful day for this country. It was an emancipation of sorts for many people, not only the African-American community, but other people of color, as well as an emancipation for our democracy Amen. in this critical time. There is a sense now that decency, respect, empathy, honesty, character, and competency will be restored to the highest office and branch of government in our country. That's the hope. And so we have a lot to uh, live up to, and I'm just proud of the African-American community because of the resiliency that we have shown, the resourcefulness, as well as the determination to do and to complete what we needed to do within our rights within this country. And I think that's why it is so important and it was so important, and it still is, that the church is in tune to the community with which we serve. That's right. We need to be in tune. We need to understand, and we need to be involved in that process. Because ultimately, just like God felt, felt our need and our hurt, we need to understand that there are people who do not yet know God. They are hurting for whatever reason. God did not, he did not say, well, if you understand your sins and understand your, uh, your, uh, what's going on with you, then I will help you. The Bible says in Romans, the fifth chapter, in verse number eight, that he demonstrated his love toward us in that while, he says, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So we have a huge responsibility. There is a window of opportunity through this time that has become available to us, and we need to take advantage of it. God has allowed us to see and go through and experience some of the most critical times, I believe, in the history of this country. And things are layering, layering upon one another, whether it be pandemic, it's racial injustice, social injustice. We have a lot of things happening. And it takes strength. It takes for the church faith in God, trust in him, our continued obedience. We understand that even in Scripture, that God raises leaders for the right purpose at the right time. And uh, both this happens both inside of his people and outside. What I meant by he has at times raised secular leaders. And he tells us to pray for them. And we do need to pray for them. And so we are in this situation. And I, I think um, we have and are experiencing one such point in time. Because of this, I think the church as a whole will have, a, as I said, an opportunity to reach not only itself, but reach out toward the loss. And what I mean by itself is, is just what I'm saying is that we need to come together as a church as a whole. 
not only black congregations with black, but others. We need to understand we are of one body to expand the borders of God's kingdom. Saying this, uh, th th this was the impetus for m this series that I'm about ready to start this morning. And I, I want to kind of like um, show a video that will help us in jest to understand how I'm going to approach this series. Because sometimes we have to be able to say, um, concede some things, to say goodbye to some things. And I am going to talk about this, but I want you to see this video in good-natured fun and jest of current events. And then we'll take our title and text. I'm going to uh, ask the uh, media team to, to play this at this time, that video. Time to go. I don't want to go. Time to go. I don't want to go. I know you're having fun, but it's time to go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Give the ball to someone else. Give the ball to someone else. Give the ball to someone else. Okay. Sometimes, even as children of God, God requires us to do some things that we don't want to do. We got to give up some things, and we got to say goodbye to some things. This is what the writer in Romans, the sixth chapter, in the text that we're going to take this morning, in verse number one, he tells the Christians there, he says in verse number one, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not, he says. He says, how shall we who have died to sin live any longer therein. My topic for today in this new series is the Say Goodbye series. Part number one, sin. Sin. When we came into the body of Christ, we could legitimately say goodbye to sin. Well, it doesn't mean that we were not going to sin anymore, ever. But it does mean, as in God's word, that sin will no longer have dominion over us, over you. So our action question for this morning is, what do you need to say goodbye to? That's what I want you to think about as we go through this lesson. What do you need or what have you or what do you intend to say goodbye to? Because just like in the, in the video, sometimes... We ourselves are holding on to some things that we need to say goodbye to. You see, there are prejudices that we have, false beliefs, hatred, sometimes it's unforgiveness, sometimes it's evil association. Sometimes it's a other type of spiritual weaknesses, and sometimes it's just this life, that we love this life more 
then we love God. We, know, we love the pleasures. When I say this life, we love the pleasures of this life. The Bible teaches in 1 John, if you can get that for me, the second chapter in verse number 15 through 17, and 1 John, the second chapter, what does he say in verse 15? He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for what? For if any man love love what? Love the world, the the love of the Father, he says, is not in him. There are some things, and we could laugh maybe at some people, because of their unwillingness to relinquish, their unwillingness to to let go, their unwillingness to say goodbye, their unwillingness to move on, and it's kind of humorous, but when I sat down and thought about it, I say, well, what about you, Doey? What about myself? And it's some things that I might be holding on to, some uh, things that are preventing me from being all I can be in Christ Jesus, and in our text, the, uh, the writer is dealing with this one thing called sin. Sin. Our proposition. He was telling them that you cannot continue in sin. That's what God's word is telling us and reveals in our text. We cannot continue in the mindset, in the desire of sin, that grace may abound. You see, some people were saying, since we have so much grace in Christ, since we can be forgiven of all our sins, and you know how we are, we, we're slick. We can find this, that we found a, 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 what do you call that? A, a loophole. That's what I was looking for. We found a loophole, and we say, well, if I can be forgiven of all sin, then what I need, what I can do is just what? Sin. And God frowns upon that. He says, God forbid. Not only frown upon it, he says, I forbid it. I forbid that mindset. I forbid that attitude. How shall we, who have died to sin, meaning when you came into Christ, he has made you alive in Christ. You were spiritually dead. You were headed for destruction. You were headed straight to hell. And now you're saying that since I'm in Christ, I can now do both. It doesn't work that way. You must say goodbye. But one of the first questions that maybe some out there and some here are asking yourselves is, okay, and I want to make this clear because a lot of times we don't make uh, this, we, we take for granted or we assume that people understand what sin is. And we need to know what sin is. The Bible in 1 John, the third chapter, and verse number 4 begins to describe it as lawlessness. 1 John, third chapter and verse number 4, describes this as lawlessness, as a transgression against God's law. As unrighteousness, some versions say lawlessness, some versions say uh, uh, transgression, some versions say unrighteousness. And in 1 John, the fifth chapter, and verse number 17, the Bible says, 1 John 5, 17, what does it say, Brother Olden? Read. All unrighteousness. He says, all unrighteousness is sin. Is sin. And there is no. That's all you don't have to do anymore. Okay. I just want to tell you what's in all unrighteousness. 
is sin. Now let me give you an example of unrighteousness. In James, the fourth chapter, and verse number 17, this is one illustration, one example of unrighteousness. James, the fourth chapter, and verse number 17. What does he say there? Read. James, the fourth chapter, verse number 17. What do you got? Therefore, Therefore what? To Listen, to him, to wait a minute, to him, that when you know, this is one example, when you know to do good and do not do it, it is what? It's sin. That's just one thing. So you, when you know to do good, meaning you understand the difference between good and evil, and do not do it, what? It is what? Sin. Okay, we just, we're just talking about what sin is right now. It's sin. The Bible in Hebrews Chapter number 3 and verse number 13. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 13. If you have that, Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 13. It says, but exhort one another daily while it is called, what? Today. Lest any one of you. He says, look, I need you all to encourage one another to exhort one another, to build one another up. He says, because lest any of you be hardened through what? Through the deceitfulness of sin. Deceitfulness. Now, we're getting into what sin does. But, but, but here, I'm telling you, sin, uh, he says, through the deceitfulness, sin has a a propensity to deceive you. You allow it to deceive. How many of us have ever been deceived? I have. Yeah, absolutely. Deceived. I hate to talk. It makes me mad about to think about some of the things, and I've told you about some of the, the times that you know I, I, I've been deceived. Yep, you know, people selling things. They selling and selling, um, selling things, and and you you think you're gonna get a good deal? You're gonna get a good deal. And when you open the box, it's all something different. It's weights or whatever. But I, I'm gonna tell you, it, it you've got to watch because sin deceives you in other ways. You see, we're deceived uh, about, um, let's talk about some of the things we're deceived about. We're deceived when it comes a lot of times to the process of our relationships. That's one reason why you should have uh, spiritual counseling before you get married. You, everybody shaking their head. I don't know about out there, but a lot of people here are shaking their heads. Yeah. Yeah. You need counseling because what, and I'm talking about spiritual counseling, not the world counseling, because the world counseling will tell you all sorts of things about marital relationships. Now, there are good counselors in the world, but God counsels best. God's word counsels best. So, it deceives. Sin is designed, my friends, to make you capitulate. Okay. Okay. Capitulate. Okay. And capitulate means to give in to it. Mm -hmm. To say it is, oh, just give in, give up. It's designed to do that. Of which we are all susceptible. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23 that what? All have sinned and come short of what? 
the glory of God. I want you to get Romans chapter 7, though, and verse number 21. It is designed to wear you down. It is designed to, it is, it is a law, the Bible says. It is a law. And in Romans chapter 7, verse number 21, it says what? I find then a law. He says, I find then a law. That when I would do good. That when I, I would do good, what? Evil is present with me. He says, evil me. is present with me. What? Read. For I delight in the law of God. He says, I God. delight in the law of what? Of God. Of God. After the inward man. After the inward man, but But what? I see another law in my he members. He says, but I see another law in my members, the way I operate, in my mind, in my heart, in my actions. He says, I see another law in operation, and it's warring against, against the, the law, law of my mind, mind and, and bringing, bringing me into, the into captivity, captivity of the law of sin, of sin which, which is, is in in my members. members. It will force you or try to force you to capitulate. Mm. It will try to do that. But as you read on, Paul begins to, begins to tell you about how he deals with this. How he has to deal with. What does he say in the next verse? Read. Oh, wretched man. He that says, I Oh, am. wretched man that I am. Who, who will deliver, deliver me, from me from this body, body of, of death. death? And what did he say? Read. I thank God through he Jesus says, I Christ. He says, I thank God Lord. through Jesus Christ. So then, with my mind, hold I on. Myself. We're going to go. We're going to come back to that. Oh. So, what does then sin do? So, we talked about what sin is. And we could go into that. That could be the whole lesson about what sin is. As a matter of fact, if you want to see some, some of them written out, you go to Galatians. You can go to Galatians. You can go to Romans chapter, um, Romans chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 9 through 11. You can go there. You can see some spelled out, some sin specifically. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. But let's say and look at what does sin do? Well, we've already talked about some. It deceives. We didn't, we missed one. I missed one, but we missed one because I missed one. And James, James chapter number one, James chapter number one, I want you to get that. James chapter number one, verse number 14 through 17. James chapter number one, verse number 14 through 17. This is what James had to say about the matter. But each one is tempted. When he, he says, is drawn "You away. are tempted when he is drawn away. When you are drawn away by, by what? Desires and by your own desire." He says, "When we are tempted, when we are drawn away, and then when we by desire, our own desire, and then what did he say? And then when desire has conceived, and then when desire has conceived, gives birth to sin. When it starts to make you capitulate, when it starts to bring forth, and you cannot hold yourself back, or will not hold yourself back. You see, part of the strength of the mature Christian or the maturing Christian or the Christian who is in tune, the child of God who's in tune, is to know when you are going or under temptation. Amen. When you begin to see it coming, oh, you can start to identify, here it comes. <laughs> then you may be able to stop the process. Because God has told us that he is not going to allow us to be tempted beyond that which you can, that you can what? Bear. Bear. That's what he said. And I think that's 1 Corinthians 10th chapter and verse number 13, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll provide you a way of escape. 
So what we are doing as children of God and as we study, yes, we all are going to be enticed. We all are going to be drawn away. Uh, But you have to be able to see it coming and then not resist God, but allow God to take you and to hold you up in it. So what does sin do? It deceives, it tempts, it draws us away, it it prevents us from doing good or doing what you know is right. So, yes, a lot of times we can see it very clearly in other people. But we need to be able to see it in ourselves. Sin not only does that, but it also separates. Sin separates. And particularly separates us from God. And of course, many of you know the scripture in Isaiah, the 59th chapter, verse number one and two. Our iniquities have separated us between us and God. And your sins has hid his face from you from you so that he will not hear that he will not hear. Now, for the Christian, again, when you talk about growth, you will understand what the writer is talking about when you can sense that God is no longer hearing you. Where you can feel the disconnection. You can feel that it is something wrong where you need to turn over your heart back to God. Sin separates. And instead of saying goodbye to God, you need to say goodbye to sin. So what else does sin do? Uh, The payment of sin. The consequence of sin, the Bible says, is death. That's Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. The consequence, what it's trying to do is destroy you. And in the New Testament, when it talks about this, primarily it's talking about spiritual death. Meaning it's trying to separate you and your relationship from God. Sin also spreads. The Bible teaches very clearly that, 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 that sin spreads. It is not just designed to stay at this level within you. It is also not designed just to stay with you. Your sin can be the impetus to other people's sinning. to other people having these type of thoughts, to have other people having these type of attitudes. You may be causing resentment because of your sin, causing other people to act out. Now, they have to own their sin. Everybody has to own their own sin, but you can be a donor. Also, sin prevents you from going to heaven. Oh, yeah. Jesus said in John, the eighth chapter, in verse number 21, he says, if you die in your sin, he says, where I am, 
you cannot come. come. So what can we do about sin as we come to a close? What can we do about sin? Well, first of all, God has done everything that needs to be done for you. He has given us an insurance policy that covers against sin. The Bible in Romans chapter number 3 and verse number 25, he talks about this concept in Romans 3 and 25. What does the Bible say? In Romans, the third chapter, in verse number 25, he talks about Jesus Christ, whom God has sent set forth, forth what? Read. Uh, to be a perpetuation. He to be a perpetuation. A, perpetu a perpetuation is a covering. Just like we are covered. Somebody asks you, are you covered? They know, you, you know what you're talking about uh, as far as uh, insurance purposes. They talk about, are you covered? That means uh, if, if something happened to you or happened to your car, you have coverage. That's what you get as a child of God, as a Christian, as a member of the spiritual body of Christ. Being in Christ is the covering. He says, I'm a perpetuation. Through faith. Through faith. In what? his blood. Read. To declare the righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Yes. Through the forbearance of God. Continue to read that in your spare time. God has already been made manifest, Christ, for that purpose. The Bible in 1 John, the fourth chapter, and verse number 9, tells us that he was made manifest for that purpose. 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse number 9. He says, and this is the love of God was manifested toward us. That God has sent, that his, only God has son sent his only begotten son into, the world, that we might live into the world that we might live through him. And everyone knows John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But I want you to also understand this next part in verse 17 of John, the third chapter. And John, the third chapter, and verse number 17, what did he say? For he did not come to what? John, the third chapter, verse number 17. He didn't come into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So even though you and me are sinners, deserve to be lost, deserve to be condemned, deserve to be ousted eternally, he says, that's not my desire. My desire is not to condemn you, but to save you. This is, this, is, this is remarkable that we have a God like that. There's a, um, a very, um, I cannot even pronounce his name, well-known psychiatrist. And he works actually in a, well, works in a, in a mental hospital. And he said that 75% of all his patients 
could walk out that door and be normal if they could be convinced that their sins were forgiven. I thought that was astounding. It shows how much we are condemning ourselves. Mm. He says they can't get over certain things. They can't forgive, and they can't be forgiven. And for that, they are driving themselves Man. Sometimes that's some of us. We feel we can't go this far or can't do this or we can't do that because we have guilt, because we have sin. Sometimes. And we need to deal with that. Allow God to help you. He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's what being in Christ is about. That's what humbling yourself before God is about. That's what allowing God to to take and move you from the place that you are to the place that you could be. So let's go back to our text in Romans chapter number 6 as we bring this lesson to its finality. And verse number 1, he says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who have died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know? Do, have you forgotten? Do you remember or are you ignorant of the fact that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also shall walk in newness of life. Christ, wanna, God wants to begin your life again. And that's the beauty that we have in Christ. He says, if you ask, if you repent, you ask for forgiveness, He says, I'm going to forgive you. But don't play that game with me. You need to start saying goodbye to some things. Because Satan, as a roaring lion, he's seeking whom he may devour. And he doesn't want you to obey God. He doesn't want you to have eternal life. Some people are going to allow him to steal the election from us. Oh, yeah, we elected in Christ. You have won the election if you have obeyed Christ. Your sins are forgiven, and he continuously cleanses us from all sin. But it can be stolen. But you have to allow it. If you 
have never been baptized or in the body of Christ, what you need to do, first of all, you've heard God's word. If you believe it and are willing to turn, to change, the Bible teaches that you are then in position to become his child. You need to confess Jesus as Lord, meaning I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We'll take you then, and we'll baptize you in water, and in baptism, as we just read, all your sins are washed away. And not only that, he then adds you to his spiritual body, which is the church, which by fact, that he covers. He becomes the covering. The covering that Christ was talking about, the propitiation, is the covering for the church, for the spiritual body. And the spiritual body, of course, is his church. Why don't you become a member of the church that you can read about in the Bible this morning? The Bible teaches that he's coming back to save his body, which is the church. He's not going to save anything outside his, bo his body, according to the Bible. But we need to understand that we need to be where the saved are Amen. in order to be saved. Amen. You go through this process after hearing the truth, believing it, willing to turn, confessing Jesus as Lord, and being baptized, there you are. You have salvation. We're going to bid all who are here this morning, if you want to come forward and if you have something that you would like to say, if you're in the body of Christ, as far as repentance, we bid you to come. But more so, we bid those also, who are here who have never been baptized for the remission of sins, we'll baptize you. I'm going to ask you one question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And those of you who are connecting with us online, I want you to take this time right now. If you want to respond or reply to the message and need help, message me at Minister at woodlawnpark.org. Minister at woodlawnpark.org. We will answer that, and we will get connecting with you immediately. Thank you so much. Let us go to God in prayer, and then we're going to have an invitation song. Dear God, our Father, we just thank you for allowing us the time, the space, to be able, Father, to worship you in spirit and truth, worship you in a peaceful setting, Worship you, Father, through the mechanism that you have allowed us to have as far as connecting those who are even not in my, our physical presence. And, Father, we just allow and we thank you for that. And we just ask you to continue, Father, to be with us. We hope that your word, Father, will pierce men and women's hearts, cause them, Father, to make a change in their lives, say goodbye to the world, say goodbye to sin in their lives, and Father, become a follower of you. It is in Jesus Christ's name we ask this prayer. Amen. Let us stand. Would you be free from your burdens of sin? There's power in the blood, a power in the blood. Oh, would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power.
church. Brother Samuel, you spoke about a lion today. Well, you came back preaching like a lion today, brother. Let's give it up to Brother Samuel today. <laughs> Wonderful job. If you're blessed and you know it, say amen. amen. All right. Praise God. The announcements today. Uh, the Monday through Saturday ladies prayer call at 10 a.m., that time will be, I'm sorry, that number, excuse me, 605-475-4800. The dialing code is 822-601. For this Tuesday, there will not be a women's Bible, a women's Bible study held uh, on November the 3rd. They are in Lesson 8. Mary of Bethany, for your notes. We have a men's Tuesday night Bible study every Tuesday between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. I believe that is now in person. Every Wednesday, we have a Bible study live streamed at the, um, on Facebook and YouTube and at the building at uh, 7.30 p.m. If you would like to pick up your communion supplies, drop off your offering, you can do so at the building every Saturday between 10 a.m. 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. These are all the announcements that I have at this time. And as always, we'd like to ask that you would please continue to pray for the sick and shut-in and the bereaved and the family of the bereaved. Thank you. Listen, I have one more announcement. It's about our Woodlawn Park Ambassador Sunday School. The Ambassador Sunday School is going to go virtual on November the 22nd. We want to make sure that all of our members, and parents, and children, youth basically, who are part of Woodlawn Park, know that we're going virtual on the 22nd. You are invited to participate in that, but it's not only uh, limited to our, our members and, and, and youth in our uh, Bible school, but it's going to be for anyone uh, that um, we can encourage to come, encourage to log on. It's going to be virtual. It's going to go through Zoom. Now, what you have to do, first of all, is know that we now are going to start our youth Bible study virtually on the 22nd. You're going to have to have Zoom or go through the Zoom mechanism on your computer. Um, and uh, we will uh, also send you the information, the link, so that you can connect, you and your children can connect, uh, at, but you need to do this. You need to register or at least sign in or email info at woodlawnpark.org, info, that's I-N-F-O, at woodlawnpark.org. Let us know your name, your children's name, and what we'll do is use that email that you registered on to send you uh, the link information so that you could connect on the 22nd of November for virtual Bible school. Now, this Bible school is going to be phenomenal because it's going to be designed for youth, and uh, we are going to uh, have fun, uh, songs, games, and even uh, prizes. So there are going to be uh, prizes, uh, a, a chance to win uh, prizes, and we'll get it. We'll get the prize to you or in some kind of way you can pick it up. But whatever it is, it's going to be catered for our youth, so it's going to have a, a fun component to it. It's definitely going to be educational, Bible educational, and things like that. Now, if you have friends, we need you to uh, engage them, let them know that their children can participate in this also. And I think it's going to be a great, great opportunity to, um, to make sure that our children are getting uh, some spiritual uh, education, some uh, understanding of what God has for them, uh, even through this uh, particular time in our society. Now, that starts November the 22nd. It will go each week 
each week, uh, each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. every Sunday morning, we have the Ambassador uh, Virtual Sunday School, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. If you want to have uh, any questions about this, besides the info at woodlawnpark.org uh, email address, you can always email me at minister at woodlawnpark.org. I also thank those who filled in in preaching and teaching while I was away, Brother Olden, uh, Brother Bland, uh, Brother Assembly had the Wednesday class uh, last Wednesday. Uh, it's, just, it's just awesome. I do appreciate it. May God continue to bless and keep you. God bless you, brother. Now let us all stand at this time. Let's continue to keep in prayer as the congregation. And a big shout out to all those essential church workers that have been working um, dil diligently to keep ministry thriving through this pandemic. Amen. So we want to keep all of those church workers in prayers. And we want to give a big shout out as well, which I love to say to uh, Sister Ellis uh, and Sister Carrington and those other individuals that came together to correlate the ministry yesterday. Amen. We fed over 150 families. Can we give God a love and positive for that? Uh, for the food distribution drive that we did on yesterday, so that was a great work. Uh, we're going to say sanctuary. Let's remember who we are. Let's remember whose we are uh, as we transition through the course of this week. Reach out to somebody through text message, email, maybe by a phone call to encourage, to empower, and to enrich uh, their lives uh, spiritually. Now let's say, Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, a pure and holy, a tried and true. giving me that opportunity to remind me uh, about the food program, uh, distri distri distribution program that happened uh, last week. I just appreciate that. And the community was definitely Amen. encouraged and engaged. Uh, we had lines all the way. It was, they were just long Amen. lines. So we also are going to have another community food distribution uh, on the December the 5th, yep. that's Saturday, December the 5th, and if you know people who need uh, food, and need this type of assistance, please let them know to be at the Whitlong Park Church of Christ, Amen. December the 5th, that's Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. Thank Amen. you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Brothers and sisters, and those who are visiting us online, it is time for us to Pray to our God through his son Jesus as we close out this service. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of your dear son Jesus, we humbly come before you, thanking you for everything that you've done and doing for us in our lives. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that you forgive us of any sins that we have committed against you and only you in thought, word, or deed, by omission and commission. Please strengthen and encourage us. Put a guide of our feet and put a guard at our mouths. Enable us to grasp what has been teached unto us today by Brother Assembly and be able to spread that to those dying men and women everywhere. We ask this prayer in the name of your humble son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
It can be a confusing journey, and it doesn't always make sense. Family issues, substance abuse, fading health, and financial problems are just a few of the roadblocks you may encounter. Need answers? At Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, we want you to know that God loves you and has the answers you seek. No one here expects you or your life to be perfect. At Woodlawn Park, we're just like you. Real people with real problems who are seeking real solutions in Christ. We've been through some of the same struggles and understand that the pathway to your full potential is paved with love, support, and the encouragement of a dynamic community of believers. We know that within Challenges Lab, the opportunity to move mountains in our lives and in our community. We believe that God has a purpose for you, and our goal is to help you achieve it. At Woodlawn Park, we're creating a new brand of believers, one that beats the odds when there isn't a chance, one that succeeds when the world says we can't, one that truly cares about the abandoned and lost. One that has faith in God's power, no matter the cost. If you're wondering what your purpose is in life, if you're looking for the next step, join us. Let us meet you where you are, teach, encourage, and motivate you to allow God to enhance your life so that you can transform the world.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.